Hi then guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is just going to be a short video of the updated settings um, for the Setplus version 3 BMS that I've um, put onto the BMS. Um, so look, I just want to get this one out of the way real quick. Um, the question might be, will the settings on the first video work or are they wrong? Um, yes, they will work. Are they wrong? Well, that's uh, really open to the crowd. The settings that I've put on the last um, video, they're a little conservative. Um, so the higher cell voltages are set a little bit low. Uh, so what you might find is your batteries will charge up to around 98, 99%. That can cause a problem with top balancing. Now, when I had just the one battery in, um, it was working out fine. Um, it was balancing absolutely fine. Um, but I found that it was still within kind of 10, 15 uh, millivolt uh, um, cell difference. So it was actually quite good. The problem for me arose when I installed a second battery. And this is partly because of the way I daisy chained uh, the batteries. But this is going to be a BMS video, not a hooking up several batteries together video. So yes, the first video will work uh, for your settings and you shouldn't have any issues with it. However, if you are building your first battery and you are yet to upload the settings uh, or change the parameters, these are the settings that I'd recommend because it will work for one or more batteries um, hooked up together. Let me just show you here what I'm talking about. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do, of course, is um, hook up your battery pack to your PC or a laptop. Remember, you're connecting it into the center port, which is the... Um, RS485-1. Um, once you have the battery pack powered on and connected up to your PC or laptop, you're going to open up your Dev BMS Studio. You're going to click in here, select BMS, and OK. So you've opened up essentially the home screen, and you're going to want to log in here. All right, so without logging in, nothing will get saved. Default password is 88, so 8888888, uh, enter. So once we've done that, we can essentially ignore what com it is. That just depends on what port you've um, hooked it up to on your PC or laptop. Com changes uh, all the time, depending on which one I plug it into. Uh, pack one, of course, because we're only connecting to one pack here. What you're gonna wanna do is make sure that your baud rate is set at 19,200, all right? So we can click start or start up here. And we're now connected to the pack. You're gonna to wanna to go into parameter management. So I'm gonna click there. Now the settings that you're going to want to pay attention to are lines at the moment, remember the lines change, it's lines three, four, five, and six. 11, 12, 13, and 14, all right? So line three, let's just, actually let's uh, make this a little bigger, all right? So we have more space to work with here. So line three is battery high voltage recovery. Uh, I believe the standard default on that was 54 volts. Um, so you're gonna change that to 56 volts. Your battery high voltage alarm will be 56.8, and you'll see in a little while um, why that's going to be the case. Your battery over voltage recovery here, that's going to be set at 56. So lines three and five are going to be the same. They're a mirror of each other. They're a mirror of each other on the default settings. So if you changed one, you're going to need to change the other to match it. Line six is battery over voltage protection, which is 57.6 volts. Now that was actually the default setting, uh, which I believed at the time was a little bit too high. Um, but I've since been schooled and I realized that 57.6 is actually a good figure to have that at. I was on a DIY solar forum and uh, one of the guys on there agreed that 57.6 was a little high, um, but doing a little more research into it, 57.6 for the battery over voltage protection is actually a good figure to be on. Next, you're, wanna go, you're gonna wanna go down to line 11 in this case and it's cell high voltage recovery. So that's 3.5 volts, right? 
So why 3.5 volts? Well, if we look at cell high voltage recovery, and then we have battery high voltage recovery up here on line three, let's just bring out our calculator, why don't we? So calculator, and if I have 3.5, we're setting that at, yeah, 3, yeah, 3.5, 3.5 times 16 cells, you end up with your 56 volts, which is what we have on line three. I'll just get that out of the way there. Battery high voltage recovery. So essentially, all you have to do is look at these first um, four lines that I've pointed out, so three, four, five, and six. And if we look at the battery high voltage recovery here on four, so we'll just put in 56.8, and we'll just divide that by 16, and that will give us 3.55 volts. And look, we have cell high voltage alarm, 3.55 volts. So up here, the first four, um, as in three, four, five, and six, that's your pack. And then when we're looking at 11, 12, 13, and 14, they come down to your cell values. So whatever your cell values are, you times those by 16. Whatever your pack values are, you divide those by 16. And all those figures are what you'll end up with there. So cell high voltage alarm, 3.55. Cell over voltage recovery, 3.5. And cell over voltage protection is 3.6. All right, so let's get that out of the way there. Now, one other function that I have changed is over here on the function switch. I found this a little bit unusual, um, but it's a setting I think should probably be turned on. If you look at here, number 54 under State, under state of charge protect that was off so i've just turned it on and i believe that what happens is the setting will be over here as well and um, whatever parameter you have that set on whatever voltage you have that set on it basically just activates here so if your battery uh, pack falls below a certain voltage it will turn the battery pack off to protect it from degradation uh, so i would suggest turning line 54 in this case under state of charge protect turn that on so I've now done that on all three battery packs. Guys, those are the new settings. I recommend you do the same uh, if you want to get the same results as myself. I recommend if there's any changes to these settings whatsoever, I'm going to put them in the description below. All right, so any changes will be in the description below. Um, have a look at the description before you implement any of the changes that have been put into this video. So guys, uh, those are the updated settings that I've um, put onto my version 3 BMS. Um, all of them have the active balancers um, in the packs there as well. Um, if there are any changes to those settings, I'll put it down in the description. So I'm not gonna make another video on this. Um, I'll simply put any changes, any tweaks that I found, I'll put them in the settings. With these new settings, the daisy chaining method that I've used uh, will be less of an issue. Um, the more ideal way to daisy chain your battery. So if you are adding more batteries, um, use method two of daisy chaining. If you can get away with it, if you can get your cables to reach both the positive of let's say battery one and the negative of battery two or battery three or whatever way you have it hooked up. Um, I'm gonna be setting up a bus bar system on mine. So with these new settings and the bus bar system, I shouldn't have any issues with losing charge um, on my battery packs going forward. If you are building your first battery pack, I'd say use these settings rather than the settings in the first video. Um, they're, they're, they're still slightly conservative. They're definitely not pushing the battery cells, um, but you should be able to top balance your cells uh, no problem uh, with these settings, especially if you have the active balancer installed. All right, as always guys, um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and have a good one.